Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the topic dimension of a vector space. Dimension of a vector space. Consider a vector space V. Let V be a basis of this vector space V. Then this vector space V is said to be finite dimensional if B is finite. That is, if the basis of a vector space V is finite, then the vector space is called a finite dimensional vector space. And the number of elements of basis B is called the dimension of V. So, if uh, the basis of a vector space V is finite, then the vector space is called a finite dimensional vector space. And the number of elements of basis uh, is called the dimension of V. And it is denoted by dimension of V. Now, if B has n vectors, that is the basis has n vectors, then V is called n-dimensional vector space. If B the basis has n vectors, then uh, the vector space is called n-dimensional vector space and we can uh, return it as dimension V is equal to n. Now, if the basis B is infinite, then vector space V is called infinite dimensional vector space. Infinite dimensional vector space. Now, if the vector space V is the trivial vector space, then dimension of that vector space is equal to 0. That is, if the vector space contains only the identity element, then the dimension uh, of the vector space is 0. Now, we have some examples. Uh, R2 is a finite dimensional vector space with dimension 2. That is, dimension of R2 is 2. It is because we have already discussed that uh, this B equal to 1, 0, 0, 1 is a basis for R2. We already uh, discussed this. We know this is the uh, standard basis for R2. Since this basis contains two elements, we can say that uh, dimension of R2 is Okay, so R2 is a finite dimensional vector space with a dimension 2. Uh, similarly, we have our dimension of R3 is 3 uh, because R3 has a basis B equal to E1, E2, E3 or 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is a basis uh, for R3. So, since this basis contains uh, 3 elements, we have dimension of R3 is equal to 3. Okay. Similarly, we have uh, dimension of Rn is equal to n because we have the basis for Rn which is E1, E2, E3, etc. En, where E1 is equal to 1, 0, 0, etc. 0, E2 equal to 0, 1, 0, 0, etc. 0, etc. And En is equal to 0, 0, etc. 1. And the last entry is 1. So, any basis of Rn uh, contains n elements so dimension of rn is equal to n now another example is uh, rnx we have rnx is the set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n so uh, the dimension of rnx is equal to n plus 1 because uh, the standard basis of rnx is 1 x x square etc x power n so it contains n plus 1 elements so uh, so we have any basis of rnx will uh, will contain n plus 1 elements so the dimension of rnx is, is n plus 1 another example uh, dimension of m m by n r that is the set of all uh, m by n matrices with the real entries so the dimension of this uh, vector space is nothing but m into n it is because uh, we have the basis b equal to e i j for i equal 1 to m and j equal to 1 to n so we have the uh, elements of the basis e1 1 e1 2 etc e1 uh, n then e2 1 e2 2 etc e2 n etc e m n sorry e m 1 e m 2 etc e m n so uh, it contains the basis contains m into n elements where e i j has the uh, entry 1 in ij the position and 0 in uh, other positions okay so e11 is nothing but e11 is equal to 1 0 0 0 etc 0 0 0 etc 0 so this is e1 
e11 e12 is uh, e12 this is uh, here is one and the others are zero etc so since the basis for m uh, m by n r contains m into n elements we have the dimension of this as m into n now we have a theorem let v be a finite dimensional vector space if g is a finite spanning set of v that is span of g is equal to v and if uh, i is a linearly independent subset of v such that i is subset of g then there is a basis b of v such that i subset of v subset of g that is the theorem says that suppose we have a, a finite dimensional vector space v that means that means uh, any basis of v contains a finite number of elements and uh, we have uh, g is a finite spanning set of v that means g is finite uh, g is a finite subset of v and span of g is equal to v that is uh, g spans v and also we have we are given that i is any linearly independent subset of v such that i is subset of g then there is a basis b of v such that i subset of b subset of g that is uh, in between i and g we can find a basis b for this vector space v now we can try to prove this here we are given that v is a vector space finite dimensional vector space and uh, g is a finite spanning set of v that is span of g is equal to v also we are given that i is linearly independent now we are considering two cases first case is uh, suppose span of i is equal to v suppose span of i is equal to v actually we need to so uh, find a basis b of v such that i subset of v subset of g so if span of i is equal to v then i is a basis because i is here here we have i is a linearly independent so uh, if span of i is equal to v means v we can be generated by using i and uh, by using the definition of the basis we have i is a basis so in that case we can choose b equal to i that is the basis as i and we get i is subset of b subset of g so if span of i is equal to v then uh, we can choose this b as the same i uh, or the proof is completed in that case uh, now suppose that uh, span of i is not equal to v that is v cannot be generated by i then uh, we must have i uh, subset of g otherwise uh, i equal to g and so span of i equal to v because if i equal to g then span of i is equal to span of g but we have span of g is equal to v therefore span of i is equal to v so since span of i is not equal to v we have we must have i is not equal to g so so i is subset of g so since i is subset of g we have span i is subset of span g but we know span g is equal to v so there exists an element g1 belongs to g minus i such that g1 does not belongs to span i that is since span i is a uh, subset of v uh, subset of span g which is equal to v therefore we can find uh, g1 an element g1 belongs to g minus i that is it belongs to g and it does not belongs to i such that g1 does not belongs to span of i since i is linearly independent since i is linearly independent and g1 does not belongs to span i we can say that i union g1 is linearly independent because g1 does not belongs to span i means that g1 cannot be expressed as a linear combination of elements of i that means g1 and uh, elements of i are linearly independent okay that is g1 is linearly independent with uh, the elements of i uh, because g1 does not uh, does not belongs to span i if g1 belongs to span i then g1 can be expressed as a uh, linear combination of elements of i so in that case g1 and the elements of i are linearly dependent but since g1 does not belongs to i g1 cannot be expressed as a linear combination of elements of i therefore uh, the i union this set g1 is linearly independent so we obtain that uh, i union g1 is a linearly independent set now in that case if span of that set that is span of i union g1 is uh, v 
then it is a basis because we already we obtained that I, I union G1 is linearly independent. Now if span of this is equal to V then uh, this is linearly independent and it generates uh, the elements of V. So uh, I union uh, G1 is a basis then we can choose uh, B as that basis I union G1. Now if uh, span of I union G1 is not equal to V then we can repeat the above argument to uh, obtain an element G2 which belongs to G and does not belong to this I union G1 such that I union G1 G2 is linearly independent. So proceeding in this way uh, since G is finite we can see some uh, M such that uh, the set B equal to I union set G1 G2 etc Gm is a basis uh, of V with I subset of B subset of G. So this completes the group uh, proof. Now we have some corollaries for this theorem that we can discuss in the next lecture.